Hello, Victory family. We, the leadership of our church, the elders, um, we want to come together as one to address the current situation, to provide you words of encouragement and hope, and to share our plan of action as well. So um, be blessed and may the Lord be glorified in all that we uh, say and do uh, at this time. I'm going to go first in sharing. On Thursday, this past Thursday, I went to Spartan Final, experienced probably uh, much of what you have. Uh, no shopping carts, long lines. On Friday, Wendy and I went to Target and Albertsons. Same thing, a lot of panic, witness firsthand, uh, just the hysteria that is going on, and, and sense the fear and the uncertainty that is surrounding us at this time. And at one point, just immersed in this hysteria and this madness, I felt rising up within me, just me personally, this anxiety. And perhaps you too have had this similar experience or, or feeling, just as my stomach and chest started to tighten a little bit and just kind of like a shortness of breath a little bit. I just kind of felt what everyone else was kind of uh, conveying or just communicating by, by their actions. And at that time, I'm not sure exactly why, but I gave my wife, Wendy, a hug and said something to the effect of, we have to rest and trust in the Lord. Because I knew that <clears throat> our peace must lie in him. So I want to encourage all of you to stand on and remember this. Uh, like Jesus was with the disciples in the storm, he is with us now. And he is our, our stable foundation and he can bring calm to us even now. And as Jesus promises in him, we have peace. In this world, we are going to have troubles. But take heart, Jesus says, for I have overcome the world. So let's believe, stand on, on that truth. So when the storm arises around us and within us, draw close to the Lord, and he will draw close to you. You are not alone. And that's something that we, as elders, have been preaching um, for the past how many weeks. Intimacy with the Lord is what we want to encourage you to do and continue to do um, throughout this whole uncertainty, uncertain times and also uh, and beyond. When I was younger, if they had told me school was going to be canceled for two to three weeks, I would have thought, that's awesome. Right? My, my dreams have come true. My prayers have been answered. Uh, getting to sleep in early and not have to go to class. God is good, right? And now that we're actually in the reality of this situation, uh, I have a much different feeling about it. Our youth were currently in the midst of planning an event coming up on March 20th, um, a fundraiser type event for a preschool called Precious Lamb in Long Beach, which seeks to help and support families going through poverty and homelessness. And the, it was completely youth-led. The youth were taking ownership of it and running with it. Uh, our youth leaders were helping and providing support whatever way they could, uh, but the youth were really the ones driving this project. And Thursday I had to call them and email them, let them know um, that it wouldn't be happening because of what's going on uh, with the coronavirus. And so I don't know about them, but, but I felt bad. I felt disappointed uh, because they had put in so much time and effort and work into it um, and, and planning and meeting and, and getting the word out and we're doing such a great job. And then you start to hear about other things having to be canceled, uh, people's vacations, travel plans, different school events, um, people's dance shows, Kashiwa trips. And I think it's just our natural reaction is, is disappointment. And, you know, we're upset, we're angry, we're sad. And I think those are natural things. And as a believer, we don't have to just kind of put on this brave face and pretend like it's okay pretend, you know, just smile and kind of have to deal with it on our own. As a believer, we, we can go to God when we have feelings of disappointment and, and anger and fear and loss, and he can provide us hope and strength and comfort. 
and peace during this time. And Psalm 40 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a new firm place to stand. He hears our cry and he gives us hope, right? He brings us out of that place of disappointment and despair and sets our feet on solid ground. And then verse three says, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. You know, when those around us see how we handle uh, the disappointments that we're encountering, the, the losses, the, the struggles that we're facing, and, we, and they see the hope and the strength and the peace that we have that comes only from God. And then they will see that a, a hope and a peace that's not available anywhere else in the world. They will see why we put our faith in him and they will know why he is good. And so now when we hear of things being canceled, school closing, I can still say God is good, but for a much different reason. Uh, some, some of my thoughts on the, uh, the pandemic that's occurring with the uh, coronavirus. Um, I've had some experience with our, our business is taking a, a hit um, financially. And um, I had some in-laws, uh, my in-laws were visiting and they decided to cut their, their trip short and uh, go back home ahead of time out of fear of the, uh, the pandemic. Um, and you know, just trying to handle this as a family, it's been a little difficult, um, but we're learning just to really trust in God. Uh, and one encouragement um, that I, I wanna give is, is just not to stop worshiping and not to stop praying uh, in this time. Uh, one thing that I really appreciate about my family is that uh, it's always a joy to watch uh, my two little girls uh, dancing and singing to uh, worship music uh, that my wife will, will put on on the radio. And just to see the joy in them as, as they're singing these songs and dancing and just really having a good time and seeing the joy of the Lord in them amidst this time of fear and uh, time of adversity. And so my encouragement to you, to everybody, um, who's watching this is, is don't lose sight of that joy that God gives us to always worship him, uh, even in the darkness, even in the time of struggle um, and adversity and fear. Now, one verse that I was reading through the other night I want to share with you guys is Philippians 4. Uh, 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, be prayer by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Pre present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So really don't lose sight of who we are in Christ. You always experience the joy of Christ in us through worshiping, through praying, through petition. And just really just give up this fear and anxiety to God and just know that you're in his hands, that he's got you uh, and everything is under control uh, under his, his watch. If you're like me, you've seen the long lines at Sam's Club and Costco, the empty shelves at Target, the long lines at the supermarkets. And when you experience that, it can be pretty devastating. It can leave you with a feeling of being overwhelmed and just the panic that people are experiencing right now can be such an overwhelming feeling. And it's very easy just to focus on yourself, to focus on your own needs, to hunker down and, and to pretty much hoard just everything that you can get your hands on and just to keep it for yourself. It's hard not to give in to that fear and that desire to just look out for yourself. Just yesterday, Jen and I were standing in a long line at Smart and Final. Uh, it was probably about 20 minutes worth. We finally got up to the cashier, and I was looking at her, and I just asked her the question, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And she looked up at me, and she smiled, and she said, thank you for asking. It was a blessing just to be a blessing to her. And I think that's the mindset that we need to have is that it's very easy in our consumerist world to just look at our own needs, our own fears, our own insecurities, and just focus on ourselves. But when we have faith and we have the Lord as our identity and the Lord as our provider, God calls us to be a shining light in the middle of this dark world. And we'll have to agree that right now is a dark time. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of fear. And things may get worse before they get better. 
And so here's a time where the church can truly be the church, the church can be the light of the world that Jesus has called us and challenged us to be, to be that shining light in the middle of darkness. And so my encouragement for you, and it's a re stronger reminder for me and my family, is that don't give into that fear. Well, allow your faith, allow your identity in Christ to reign and rule and to let the light of Jesus shine through in your heart and in your actions. And look out for others. That's the key, looking out for others. Because the Lord is going to take care of us. The Lord is going to be faithful. The Lord is going to provide. But he calls us to share, to reach out, to make sacrifices for others as well. So I want to close with this. It's in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse uh, 14. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it in a basket but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let's not be like the world to give into this fear, but let's be like Christ who's called us to shine as this bright light that we can care for others and that we can bring glory to our Father in heaven. Before we close, we also want to let you know that we, as the elders, uh, care for you, and we're here for you, and we're available for you um, to talk, to listen, to, to pray, to minister to you. And so you can contact us um, through the church phone, through email, and details will be given at the end of this video as well. But uh, we just want to let you know that, again, that you are not alone and that we're here for you. We also want to let everybody know that we're going to begin streaming our services beginning Sunday, March 22nd. Uh, they'll be available on our YouTube channel um, at 10 a.m. You can find it also on our website, and we'll be emailing out a link through the uh, MailChimp mass email. In conclusion, we just want to thank you for taking this time to uh, listen to our experiences. But really what we want to emphasize is our, cons our care and our concern for you. That we as a church, as we as elders are here to pray for you, we're here to serve you, we're here to be here for you during this very challenging uh, unknown period of time. So you're in our thoughts and our prayers, and if you ever need anything, please reach out to any one of us, and our church will be here for you. May the Lord continue to be faithful in your life. May you know him intimately. May you know him greatly. May you seek him as the Lord keeps you in the palms of his hands. God bless.